Hi, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I am going to use Dharma Fiber Reactive Dyes for the very first time to dye some yarn. I have used fiber reactive dyes before. I use tie-dye kits frequently, but the tie-dye kits that I have are one-step tie-dye kits, which means that in addition to the dye, they already have the soda ash needed mixed in to that formula. Um, and so these dyes should be a little more potent and we should be able to get maybe even some brighter results than what we saw with the tulip dyes. I am a little nervous because like with any tie dye, fiber reactive dyes can be used to dye many, many, many different things, which means they stain. <laughs> So I am going to take precautions and wear old clothes and make sure to protect my work surface so that way I don't end up with a beautiful tie-dye countertop. The easiest way I could go and play around with a brand new dye is to mix it up, maybe even use one color and use one type of fiber. Well, I've decided to make things a little bit more complicated because this is a Dye Pop PS episode, and I thought it would be a lot of fun. So today we're gonna dye four skeins of yarn. Um, two skeins of Knit Picks Hawthorne, and two skeins of Lily Sugar and Cream 100% Cotton. And Hawthorne is 80% uh, Superwash Fine Highland Wool, 20% Polyamid. You can dye all of this fiber with these fiber reactive dyes, However, the setup is a little different. So I will be pre-soaking the cotton yarn with some soda ash, and I will be pre-soaking the wool yarn with some vinegar. Now, usually with cottons, you can let them sit at room temperature for the color to bind. But with wool, you want to heat it. So we're gonna add a second variable today, and I will heat one of each kind and I will let the second of each kind sit for a couple days at room temperature. Uh, yes, there's way more controls that we could incorporate into this project, but I thought it would be fun to see if just this sort of cr in this crude way, if we see a huge difference in the amount of color saturation from these techniques. I've added some of my favorite reusable zip ties onto the four skeins of yarn just to act as an additional tie. I find that this really, really helps keep things from getting tangled because there's an obvious point for sorting if things get mixed up a bit. For the Hawthorne yarn, I have eight cups of warm tap water. Three, four, five, and about six tablespoons of white vinegar. The Dharma website gave instructions for silk and it had you soaking it in pure vinegar, but I am going to treat this a little more similarly to the way I would use acid dyes. Although I am using warm water, um, just because that's, I'm gonna be using warm water for the soda ash soak, and I'm using a bit more vinegar than I might normally use. But I figure I better stop, start off with more vinegar and then decide I want to use next, less next time than the other way around. This way we're more likely to get some color to bind. Whenever I'm going to be dealing with powders in this video, I will be wearing this respirator, safety goggles, and gloves just for my personal protection. In this basin, I have eight cups of warm water. And I am going to add about a little, probably over half of a packet of this tulip soda ash. So a full packet would be 2.25 ounces. This packet I used when I was doing indigo dyeing. And I was transferring things from being a, uh, when I was transferring from my iron vat to my hydrosulfite vat. So I had opened the packet and used some amount of it. I'm not sure how much was left. Now the tulip instructions say to use one packet per gallon of water. So over half a packet and eight cups of water is a little more than it recommends. However, the Derma website says to use uh, eight ounces of soda ash per gallon of water, which would be almost four packets of this. So 
that's a huge difference. And I'm not sure if it's because the Tulip One Step Tie Dye doesn't really need soda ash. So that's why they recommend using less or what. But this is a place, I guess another place where, you know, maybe I'll, I should have used more soda ash. Um, we will see. But I have it mostly, uh, mostly dissolved. There's just some chunks in here. Now that the soda ash is dissolved, we can soak our, well, I think maybe it's slightly more than 200 grams. Maybe the actual weight is like 213 grams. I forget. I think that the Lily Sugar and Cream might be slightly over 100 grams a skein. But anyway, that is all approximate. Although it is soaking up all this eight cups of water. So I am going to add some more water in here so it can be completely submerged. So we now have a little, definitely over half a packet of the Tulip Soda Ash in 12 cups of water. And I'm gonna let all of the yarn soak for at least 30 minutes, but probably closer to an hour. After a crude test with some litmus paper, it looks like the pH of our soda ash solution is around a 12. That is quite basic. And the pH of our vinegar solution is around a five or a six. The four colors I have today are grape, turquoise, nightshade, and raven. And I will be mixing up uh, four ounce bottles, <laughs> hilariously using the tulip tie dye bottles that I save uh, for each of these colors. On Dharma's tie dye instruction page, they give uh, proportions of urea and these dyes to mix up. I think the urea is to help the dyes dissolve a little bit better, so I will be using that today since that is what Dharma Training Company recommends. In one cup of water, Dharma recommends that you use two teaspoons of colors with no asterisk, four teaspoons of colors with one asterisk after the title, and then eight teaspoons with colors that have two asterisks after the title. Um, I'm gonna be cutting all of this in half since these bottles hold about four ounces or half a cup. So we will be mixing one teaspoon, two teaspoons, and four teaspoons. One other thing I wanna point out is this turquoise. Turquoise apparently can be really tricky Enough so they mark colors that contain turquoise in the mixture with a T, so that way you know it's there. Uh, I'm not going to change the techniques because of this dye, but we'll see how it behaves as we are using it. Before I mix up my urea water, I just want to show off these really cute yarn scissors, well, cat scissors that I've had since I was a kid. Um, I got some urea from Derma Trading Company. I'm all protected up, and let's uh, start mixing. So Dharma recommends one tablespoon of urea per cup of water. And so to make sure that I have enough of the solution for the three colors that we're mixing up today, I am gonna dissolve three tablespoons of urea in three cups of warm tap water. The urea dissolved really easily. It's always wonderful when that happens. Very carefully, I'm gonna take approximately one teaspoon of the grape, two teaspoons, again, approximately, of the turquoise, Ultimately, two teaspoons of the nightshade. And then finally, um, I'm gonna use a tablespoon and plus a teaspoon of black, which should be approximately equal to four teaspoons, because that's 20 mils. Um, yeah, and that's how that works. <laughs> I just went and rinsed my hands, which is good. There was no dye on them. 
And now I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of our urea water so I can start trying to paste these up. And I'm doing this sort of one at a time because I'm also just trying to uh, get these powders liquid as fast as possible. remember what color the nightshade is. Okay, it is like a navy type blue. Finally, the black. And so the black I chose is called Raven. Um, on the Dharma website, they actually show off a lot of the different blacks that they have and how they break. And I think that this one might break blue, which is why I chose it. But I don't remember if it breaks blue or if it doesn't break. So that's the thing that I will need to explore. So now that I have all of our powders wet, I'm going to keep adding, and I'll start probably one color at a time. Um, let's see. But I will keep adding more and more water and mixing it until the dye has dissolved. And then I will use either a funnel or a really, really careful pouring to add the color to my fragrance bottles. And I'll go ahead and add the water level up to the line indicated on the bottle. The colors are all mixed, and now I'm going to go and get set up to start dyeing the yarn. Uh, I do want to move quickly because uh, fiber reactive dyes will react with water, and so we will lose potency as time goes on. I squeezed out a lot of the water, probably could have gotten more, but a lot of the water out of our cotton yarn, and I have it laid out on two separate sections of plastic wrap. That way I can wrap them up once we have applied the color. So I think that the order I want to do things is maybe nightshade, turquoise, uh, grape, then black. And so let's start hand painting. Uh, let's start with the turquoise. Ooh. I will say right away, this feels way, way, way more intense than tulip tie-dye. Um, the color immediately just feels a lot darker and more saturated. Let's see how it moves. Ooh, this is beautiful. I feel like it smells a little chalky. Um, just that's what the scent feels like. But by pressing, yeah, you can see like it's not like it's striking super fast. So I can get really nice color penetration um, all the way through. I, I'll still add some color to that reverse side, but um, from just a first little look. At it, I'm I'm pretty happy. Uh, I picked this cotton yarn because it is super absorbent. You all know that some of the cottons I have used. Oh, I don't know why I put the lid on, but some of the cotton yarns that I've used over the years are not as absorbent. Uh, so I wanted to give this a really good shot from the get-go. I do want to wipe my hands in between colors, uh, mostly. I'm not worried, I guess, about seeing the most true form of each of these colors. I'm more uh, curious how this dye behaves overall, and whoa, uh, that color is deep. I'm also really, really curious, to be honest, to see if 
or not just if, but like how much of a difference we will see between heating the yarn and not. Ooh, this color definitely breaks. So the two colors that look like they break a fair amount, oh, that nightshade's looking really purple. It could change um, with time, but it's looking really purple right now, which actually is probably why I picked it. Um, <laughs> Because, you know, it's me. But uh, it, when I was washing out and wiping the counter, I saw multiple color flux in both the Raven and the Nightshade. But interesting, it looks very blue um, until like I start moving it more. And then it looks more like a deep uh, eggplanty purple. Which, of course, is having me laugh because this is... You know, like a turquoise and eggplant purple is a color combination I have used, um, and navy is a color combination I've used so, so many times. Um, I hope you guys aren't sick of it, but I like nearly burst out laughing when I saw the colors that I had in the fiber reactive dyes when I went to go film this video. I don't know why I assumed, I had assumed that I had uh, a range of colors and that I picked up some primaries, but I think I just grabbed a bunch of colors to use as a proof of concept. And so that's why these are the colors that I have and these are the ones that I'm working with. Oh goodness. <laughs> um, okay, we've got the Raven now. Ooh, that's pretty. Uh, what was I going to say? I ordered these at the same time I ordered my very first set of Jacquard acid dyes. Um, and so I think I know I was overwhelmed with color selection from all of the dye. But I will say working with tie dye is pretty nice. Um, oh dear. Okay. Cross color contamination, but look at the look at how well I can get. Eh, okay, there's some white spots in there, but it's not hard to get really good coverage on the yarn. But again, the thing to uh, be careful of <laughs> is that this will like stain like wood floors or countertops, and so you do want everything nice and protected. Um, but squishing it through the yarn is not um, super, super hard. So I am excited about that. So I'm not sure what I'm expecting to see with the yarn that I heat versus the yarn that I don't. Um, Certainly with the wool based yarn, I am expecting to see more color in the one that I heat versus the one that I don't because they recommend a heating technique for wool based yarns. Um, but we will see what we see here. Okay, and um, Okay, so we've got here, this is, the grape is a much redder purple. It looks exactly like grape Kool-Aid. Um, so the name is awesome. I think that the colors we get will be more true on the cotton than the wool. Um, at least that's what I am expecting because that is what the advertisements say. <laughs> um, so of all the colors, this is the least concentrated that I've put in so far. Um, do, do, do. But I would say for just like randomly well, not so randomly, but by just picking some of my favorite colors or ones I wanted to play around with, I'm pretty happy with how this colorway is coming together so far. Um, and don't worry, I'm going to 
fill this in. I'm not planning on trying to leave white behind, even though it would be interesting to see how colors might spread out uh, over time. But there are, again, many experiments we could do with this when we're playing with a new color and I don't need to try to do everything all in one video as much as I would like to. I would like to take this opportunity to give a huge shout out to Ada Lai, Karen Siegel, and all of the other Fiber patrons. You'll see a bunch of their names crossing the screen right now. Uh, the support of all of you and all of the patrons um, really does help me uh, continue to create content and really vary the materials that I use and you know the materials, the dyes, and everything. And so I won't just want you to know how much I truly appreciate all of you. Uh, if you're not currently a patron and you're interested in getting early access to videos like this one, um, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Um, in addition to early access to new content, uh, patrons can get behind the scenes sneak peeks uh, and advance notice of Etsy shop restocks and more. So it really is worth checking out. I decided to put the turquoise in a center portion because if it ends up being like more of a pastel blue, I don't think that that will bother me quite as much. I do want to make sure I have more of this, what is it, nightshade? Especially around that tie. Um, again, these are not going to be like an exact dupe of each other because I could have pre-measured out the dyes and then really use that to take a look at the different colors, but I did not do that today. Um, maybe that is something that I will explore uh, in the future, depending on the first results um, that I see here. But if you remember, the very first time I did like heat versus time versus vinegar, uh, maybe I didn't use vinegar, but maybe heat versus time with the tulip tie-dye, uh, the results were uh, pretty underwhelming because uh, I had left out some controls and so it looked like everything just sort of worked really similarly. So it definitely helped uh, to have more mini skeins and have more variables. And so maybe we'll play around with that more, but I thought that for starters it was worth going with something that we had a feeling would work. And the nice thing here is that I have used not even half, either half or not quite close to half of each of the colors um, with this just initial hand painting. So I am really, really happy with that. And now I am going around and just sort of wiping up a lot of this excess color. Yes, I could contaminate uh, things in here, but little mistakes are part of what make tie-dye so wonderful, right? <laughs> There's definitely still some dye on my glove. Oh, this one is real close to the um, edge. But now I am going to start rolling these up into some jelly rolls. One of these I am going to pop into my still cool steamer basket to wait for the wool based yarn and then so this one will go pop in that steamer basket to wait for its friend and then the other one I am going to place inside a gallon size Ziploc bag and set it aside for at least 24 hours. I am now going to dye approximately the same colorway on Knit Picks Hawthorne. And again, it's approximate because I might be adding a lot more or less dye, but we're looking to be able to give overall impressions on this technique. But again, with first impressions, the color looks like it's really, really saturated. Um, it goes through the fiber really, really nicely. 
and actually a little more evenly than I expected. A few of the colors seem to strike a little bit faster than the initial turquoise, but uh, with adding a little more color and squishing around, a lot of the color feels very, very opaque. I'm sure it'll feel differently once the color is set. We'll probably see some more modeling in there. But right now I'm impressed with the initial coverage. Once again, I uh, wiped up all of the excess dye with a paper towel and wrapped the yarn up into a nice jelly roll. And I set one aside to wait for 24 hours and prepared the other one to go directly into my steamer basket. My steamer pot has some water and I'm just starting to heat it up now. We have our 100% cotton and our superwash nylon sock yarn all rolled up in here and I am going to cover it with a lid. Uh, you can see that we're not yet steamy and I do think I want to let this all steam for about an hour. I forget what's recommended from the Dharma website but an hour feels pretty good to me but I will start counting that hour once the steamer basket is hot. If I weren't trying to steam the two types of fibers for approximately the same amount of time, then I probably would have had it hot already, but you know, <laughs> it is what it is. The rest of the yarn will wait until tomorrow and it'll just hang out wrapped up in these Ziploc bags for at least 24 hours. The big questions here are, do we have to heat it for the colors to really strike our wool or not? With tie-dye, or with the, with the tulip tie-dye, you don't have to heat the wool-based yarn, but there's probably some kind of soda ash mixed in with the dye already, so I'm not entirely sure what we will see. I just know either way there's going to be a lot of washing. <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, fiber reactive dyes will start reacting with water, which is why you typically want to use them um, really soon after you've mixed the colors. Uh, and this is also the reason why you will never fully exhaust a dye bath with fiber reactive dyes. Uh, you want to use more dye uh, than, than you think that you need so that way you can get the really intense colors. After about an hour, um, we are still nice and steamy. I am turning off the heat completely. The yarn is nice and warm. Um, there's definitely been some leaking that I can see. I'm not sure if you can barely see, like down there. Um, so there's probably also some dye in the bottom of the pot. But I'm going to let this cool until I can comfortably sort of touch and handle it. Uh, and then we'll go unwrap and start washing. But I'm really, really excited to see what it looks like. Let's try to make sure there are no drips. Still a little warm, but I do want to go ahead and start rinsing both of the skeins. Thankfully, they are not dripping. That is pretty. These will very likely need to be rinsed separately um, so that way I can get as much of the color out as I can. But I wanted to at least start off together so we could have some initial comparison in this reveal type space. I'm using warm water right now. Um, and immediately I can see that there is a bit of a hue difference, especially around that turquoise. It is looking more like sort of a bright blue on the cotton and a deeper teal shade on our um, hawthorn. But we are still bleeding a lot, lot, lot of color. Um, I've not yet started getting lighter, but I think also there is a ton of color that I use on, um, on this fiber. A lot more color than I think was in our new dye left behind. But, I mean, that black is looking pretty black. Okay, I feel like we're finally starting to get a little paler. Still a lot of bleeding. And honestly, 
this is a big reason why I'm not a huge fan of, and I'm going to reduce the heat a bit. We can start using some soaps too. Um, this is a big reason why I'm not as big a fan of, say, tie dye compared to like acid dyes, even though uh, if you love cotton, I mean, these colors we got on this cotton are like nothing I have ever done before myself. I think that they are absolutely, absolutely amazing. Granted, they're not dry yet, but they are vibrant and saturated. There is a punch I have not gotten before. I'm just not a fan of things where I have to do tons of red things. And that's my own personal preference. But I do love tie-dye and t-shirts and stuff. But those I can toss in the washing machine, which is a bit harder to do with a skein of yarn. But let me know if you toss your yarn inside a delicate bag to rinse it out at all. But yeah, we're getting a lot of blues left, but these colors are beautiful. We are now like at a low level of bleeding. And I think this is where I will be rinsing for a while. I'll keep washing and then we'll come back tomorrow and see what we can see with our yarn. But I can't imagine it'll be super different. I like to wash my yarn in one of these pans because it means I can do more rinses a little faster and it really highlights the bleeding. But I just decided to fill up my whole sink with water so that way I could really, really move the yarn around. Um, and I'm gonna put it from here in the spin dryer to get a sense of how much bleeding there is. Uh, that last pan I showed was right before I put the water in here to soak for a bit. The bleeding is by no means done, but it is significantly less. Yeah, that just used a ton of water, but I think that with one more good like rinse in that huge bath, then we might be in really good shape. A little over 24 hours later, and we are ready to come and wash our yarn. The yarn from yesterday is already dry. Thank you, spin dryer. Um, and I'm really excited to see what has happened here. Now remember that this yarn has not been heated. Um, I did find that with the yarn from yesterday, the Hawthorne base was more pigmented once the yarn dried. The cotton did lighten significantly. Okay, let's start washing. I am really, really especially curious to see how much will come out of our soft yarns, um, especially because we did not heat set it. We just let this sit at room temperature, which is not the recommended procedure for a wool-based yarn at all. Both are looking pretty pigmented. Um, if I need to, I might go to wash them on their own. I wonder if this time our black might feel a bit more black on the cotton. I thought it was black yesterday, but then it dried, and so it was less black. Now, if I had paler colors on the yarn from the hand painting, I would be careful about letting it sit and all this dye that is rinsing off. However, since all of these colors are saturated and related, I am less concerned than I would be if, um, you know, I had some intentional white left behind. Am I seeing more or less color rinse out? I don't know. Honestly, it feels pretty similar to what happened last time. I haven't even added any, any soap yet. Let's go ahead and start that. Um, sometimes that can help. I mean, it is a lot less pigmented than it was earlier on. Um, the colors in here are stunning. And I'm trying to look and see. I mean, again, it will have to dry. The cotton feels I think the cotton feels a lot more pigmented this time, but I could be wrong. Don't forget that different dye molecules do behave differently. So
So it may not matter um, for some colors, but might matter more for some others. That is not, okay, there we go. When I squeeze, I'm curious which one or both the color is coming from. Okay, I'm gonna leave the cotton outside. I am soaking the hawthorn and okay, I'm seeing some like a hint of bleeding compared to how saturated this is. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, let's try this with the cotton. Yeah, that purple is coming out of our cotton. Interesting. That is really, really interesting to me. Okay. I am going to keep watching these. I will be um, shortly probably filling up the whole sink like I did last time. Um, maybe using the spin dryer to help some. Oh, actually, can also increase the temperature of our water. Once I'm done washing, which again, this is not my favorite stuff. You guys know that. Uh, I will put it through the spin dryer, which is one of my favorite steps because for cotton to dry overnight, I think is awesome. But anyway, I will be back soon to film some conclusions. But if things end up substantially different from the previous round, then I will definitely come back. Cold water, I wasn't seeing a lot of bleeding on the hawthorn. But with hot, uh, I'm seeing a lot more blue and purple and everything come out. Here are the four finished yarns that I hand painted with fiber reactive dyes for the first time. We have the two that we steam set, our Hawthorne, which is Superwash, Fine Highland Wool Nylon, and our 100% Cotton. And then the two that we let sit for over 24 hours at room temperature. And again, the same blends. What I think is really, really awesome today is that we see results that are consistent with the manufacturer recommendations for these dyes. Looking at just the Hawthorns with our heat set versus time set, the colors over here are all more saturated. I think it's most apparent with the turquoise, but this black looks closer to a black versus a purple here. Um, the nightshade is way more saturated and even the grape is definitely brighter and more saturated. While there is a clear difference here, it isn't necessarily like super striking. We did get colors to bind on both, but since all of the colors were affected, I don't think this is a result of there being more dye on one skein than the other. I really think that it is with the setting technique. So yeah, I think that when you're using a wool-based yarn, you should definitely heat set it with fiber reactive dyes. I know this is not revolutionary because that's what's recommend recommended, but sometimes it's worth checking to see because I found that heat setting other tie dyes that don't recommend it can give some really beautiful results. The results between the two different cotton skeins are much, much more subtle. Um, we have our heat set and our time set. I will say that I feel that there is a difference and that we have more saturation in our time set yarn versus the one that we steamed. Um, it's most apparent, I would say, in the blacks where I think this one feels a lot more gray and I do have moments of a true black here. Um, again, in the grape, there are some hints that are definitely more saturated. The turquoise is pretty similar and the nightshade, I think that overall there's more saturated, but the biggest difference are in this end with the grape and the black. Overall though, the difference is super, super subtle and it's definitely not as extreme as what we saw with our sock yarn. Um, I think that, you know, someone could consider these to be very, very similar colorways um, pretty easily, just maybe a slightly different dye lot feel. What I didn't do today was explore the effects of heat setting the yarn and then letting it sit for 24 hours, which honestly could be the best of both worlds. Um, but 
Heating the dye could also sort of speed up the reaction that the dye has with the water, and so it could still affect the way that the colors bind on cotton. Overall, I am really, really thrilled that we got decent results um, with both sets of techniques. There was a chance that we could have rinsed one of these skeins of yarn and ended up with a pastel. The results could have been way more dramatic. So this means that there is some flexibility when you are using these dyes. To be sure, I think that there was less bleeding on the yarns that I heat set versus the yarns that I didn't. It just feels like I had to do a lot more rinsing on the ones that sat for 24 hours. Um, again, I'm not entirely, entirely sure why, and if you have other suggestions for quantities of dye or how to make washing with these fiber reactive dyes go a little faster, please let me know in the comments. When it comes to commercial dyes, I think that there is no question that I prefer acid dyes over fiber reactive dyes, purely based on the amount of washing. I think that the colors that we got with these fiber reactive dyes are absolutely breathtaking. And I would be more than happy to play with a bunch more colors. But that washing. Normally, when I'm filming an episode for the channel, I film about a minute of washing total. And yes, I might wash a little bit more after that, but usually it's done pretty quickly. Today, I think I was editing from over 30 minutes of washing footage and trying to edit that down while still showing you the amount of washing and my thoughts. And so that step really does make a difference on how I feel about a technique. Don't worry, I still plan to play around with fiber reactive dyes. We could look at dip dyeing and speckling attempts, and there's a lot that we have left to explore, and there's no way that I'm done. When it comes to dyeing cotton yarns or other cellulose fibers, you need a fiber reactive dye. You can't dye these fibers with acid dyes. And so sometimes the only way to get the kind of colors you want is to use a dye that requires a lot more washing. Looking at all the yarn twisted up, I think you guys can really see the difference between our heat set versus not on the sock yarn. But the, again, the difference between the heat set versus time set with the cotton is a lot less extreme. And I think that uh, when I eventually go and list these in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop, I will probably have the sock yarns as separate listings um, with a photo for comparison between the two. But ultimately, I think that they are distinct enough that I would list them separately whereas I would probably list the two cottons together and mention that um, they are a slightly different dye lot and so there are some different, slight differences between the skeins. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching my first attempt at using Dharma fiber reactive dyes. There was a lot of content packed into this video. I know it's a little longer, but I really did want to take an in-depth look for my first time versus just trying, you know, hand painting one skein and seeing what we got. I feel like I learned a lot and so this really will help me know how I should proceed in the future. Another huge, huge thank you to all of the Chemnitz patrons who voted for the Dharma Fiber Reactive dyes. Tied for first place was taking some looks at some more synthetic dyes and there are some videos coming up on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel that look at dyeing acrylic and polyester yarns. So make sure that you are subscribed and turn on notifications by tapping that bell icon so you don't miss any new content. Finally, if you're not already a patron and you want to get early access to videos like these plus more fun perks, uh, head over to the Chemnitz Patreon. Links are in the video description and iCard. There is a Leave No Die Behind video coming up related to this. I was going to include it in this episode, but it was getting really, really long. So I will be um, adding that as a separate video shortly. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.